Hello everyone, welcome for this new episode of Talmud from Tamriel and today the subject that have win with 19 votes is the Eric Rubel discussion. So we will be starting by several subjects, maybe not everything because there is too much information. So, time out, Deltia? Yeah, there was a lot of information. Um, a lot good, some good, some bad. I know most of us have heard about the VR16 increase but we've kind of talked at length about that, posted in the forum. So we want to talk about a little bit different things. And that's like some of the mechanical stuff, racials, um, class changes, skills, a lot of new, cool, interesting things. So the first thing that comes to mind is the mechanical changes, like I like to call. Dodge roll costs more stamina. So each time you dodge roll, you're gonna have 33% more stamina costs on top of that. And this is kind of a direct nerf to people that set up their builds, but essentially just to can continually insta dodge roll over and over and over and not get hit because it's like a hundred percent evade chance because now with the champion system people have so much stamina recovery especially bosmers they can just infinite dodge roll barely ever get hit that's fascinating a really controversial one is block casting so i think their answer to sitting there block casting especially the dragonite builds like one of mine that sits there and just blocks over and over is that you no longer regenerate stamina while blocking so I know a lot of people were, were really mad about this, and we're gonna cover all these, our opinions on it. And then lastly was the shield stacking. Um, I think Sorks that, that do it, that got changed, as well as Cyrodiil damage. So it's like 50% less damage and healing, and, and without any health changes, meaning a lot of people were upset about that, thinking that the time to kill is really, is really low right now. This will make it so it's like very hard to kill someone, I think. So, Lot, lot to digest. Let's talk about the dodge roll first. What do you guys think about that? Is that affecting your builds or? Citric, you go first. Your stamina, not I, me. I, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking. In PVE, I don't see it being a big, you know, a huge problem. Uh, certainly in PVP, you know, it's, it's really going to mess with the way some people fight out in Cyrodiil. Um, as far as how it's going to affect me, you know, the, the biggest thing when i start spamming dodge roll is to get out of siege you know you see the uh the red yeah on the ground you know it's growing you, you dodge roll to get out of it next thing you know as you come out of the dodge roll there's a new red spot right at your feet and sometimes you have to dodge roll a few times in the succession to get out of the barrage of siege that's coming down at you um i think that's where it's going to hit me the hardest um you know and i'm going to have to figure out different ways to kind of get out of uh, where siege is is running because i don't you know otherwise my builds aren't centered around the dodge roll thing um okay and i mean honestly you know if it's to stop spamming dodge roll builds i'm okay with that i mean that's yeah if that's what you want to do what are you contributing to the fight and it's not such a huge nerf i mean it's every four seconds so it, you can dodge roll like the night blades that do dodge rolls over and over well still you can dodge roll cloak get out of it and it's a good defensive but it shouldn't be infinite 100 percent vade with animation canceling you can't kill me. So I like it. It's four seconds. It's a little harsh, but it's definitely a nerf to stand bills because that's their major survival. And I think with this, they also said that they might bring a uh, vigor, which is the Alliance rank war skill down. I think that's a huge positive change because that's a major primary way to heal. If you don't have vigor, you essentially have to use a two hander playing a stand build to self heal unless you're some certain class. But then so I think those two things go hand in hand. I'm not too worried about it. I play a lot of magic builds. Now, Lo, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, concer concerning the change, uh, first things, I for the complainers, I always think that it's good to try and to see by yourself, to test before to complain, because uh, we are intelligent people. We are supposed to be able to adapt ourselves. So maybe it will suck, but maybe you will find a way around a new situation, a new build, a new way of playing the games. And so if the developers are trying to consider those changes, it's probably uh, they are smarter than me. So they probably have good reason to make it uh, that way. And obviously, if you have some build that allow you to dodge roll constantly, it's wrong because you're not supposed to do that. Dodge roll is supposed to be something that you use in certain case in emergency and you are not supposed to be able to do it constantly. Um, but something that annoys me a little bit with all the change that are made, it's all for PvP and it affects PvE as well. And I'm 
especially thinking about the blocking one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this is a big problem in MMORPG in general. Uh, to balance PvP, they are forced to take decisions that will affect PvE and that will suck for PvE and vice versa. And I really do not understand why there is no more game that separates completely the PvP from the PvE. Like Guild Wars 2. In Guild Wars 2 you have no level, you have no gear, you have different skills and it's so much easier to balance uh, and to tweak the class, the gear, the whatever, the, the fights, uh, the mechanics of the game, because one will not affect the other. And so if one spell is too strong in PvP, you just modify it only for PvP and for PvE it stay right. And I prefer that system. And so I don't understand why they don't do something like that. Maybe it's too complicated for ESO, I don't know. A really good point yeah and i think that's a couple of these things are directly because of that and the pvp builds affecting it i think the block is a little too harsh um but i like a mixture of pve and pvp it's just it's hard to find that balance and this is going to take some getting used to now a couple things i'll last finish up on this i like the block casting because i do a block night and it's cheap cheesy and it works and that's why i do it but it's going to make it more active like you have to block timely now you can't just sit there and go oh, i'll just hold block and i have a stamina build i have 100 champion points and reduce block you'll never kill me now it's gonna be fun you're gonna have to do an ability you're gonna have to reflect and then boom block one is an actual reason i just hope it doesn't completely screw up pve so we'll have to wait and see on that but uh, go ahead yeah concerning concerning this particular problem i think that maybe the gameplay with the group can change for instance the templar healer will bring more shard and stuff like that maybe there will be a better synergy with the other players as well that can support this problem that the tank will have it is not only the tank responsibility to face this problem this change but it can um well everyone need to adapt to this new gameplay yeah, and you know, with with both of these things, the block casting, the dodge roll, um, w one thing that I will say that I like about it is it's it's, and it, it kind of touches on what Delphi was saying. It's going to force people to play the game rather than spamming a single function or ability. Yeah, um, the adapt, and it's gonna be more more skillful, I think. Right, and I like that. So that's going to lead to some new dynamics, I think, in in combat, both uh, you know, definitely PVE and PV si PVP sides. Yep, um, so we're gonna move on, but we'll last touch thing on Nernhone. They're making Nernhone trait um, specifically for the actual individual piece, not overall. Great nerf, magic builds are gonna completely benefit from this in PvP. Um, so I really, really like that. They'll be back in the fold. Okay, moving on. They announced some cool spell changes and class balancing things. We are gonna couple race drills, but let's talk about each individual one. Um, so what is our favorite one first? I'm going first, Loa. Yeah. <laughs> and it's Obsidian Shard. So right now, it's basically a ranged stun that no one uses because Fossilize is much, much better. And they're going to make this for the Dragonite, a 28-meter stun that heals. Oh, my God. And with Earth and Heart, you get 5% of your stamina back every time you use an Earth and Heart ability. I don't know if this is going to make it alive in its current iteration because it sounds absolutely remarkably powerful. So I know Aloha, that was your favorite change as well, right? Yep. Does Ellie? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Uh, another one. Did you like the Honored the Dead change? Yeah, I think it's interesting because now you will have a choice because basically if you are a healer, you always take Breath of Life, never Honor of the Dead, which is more solo thingy. Uh, and it's, it will be more what I thought it was at the very beginning when I started my Templar and I choose that morph and everyone told me, hey, you're stupid, why are you taking that morph? Oh, no. No one told me I was stupid. But basically, uh, people say, you know, it doesn't work very well. It doesn't work as it should. And now it works exactly as it should. It's really one big burst heal for one single target uh, that will return you some magicka. So I think that can be interesting if you're 
it, 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 it can make you change completely your strategy with the choice of spells that you're using and uh, maybe maybe it can be interesting for me with uh, as I'm using a lot the shield from the restoration stuff a double shield which other people not using that morph but I like that one and um, maybe combined those two spells can be better than the breath of life that I'm wasting because often there's only one person taking so much damage so I don't know maybe I will it will make me change my builds. And then Sig, I, I imagine you're happy about the Nightblade change, or what's your, I am, what's your thing? I am happy about the Nightblade change. Um, you know, I've been, you know, my main is, is a Nightblade, and I just made a new one over on the DC side, and, you know, he's pretty much living in Blackwater Blade right now, and Shadow Cloak is my best friend. You know, it's, it's a personal cleanse, it's a, you know, GTFO button, and there's been numerous times where you know I've tried to use it and I've gotten hit anyway even though I shouldn't have you know like uh, you know I use cloak and then somebody initiates an attack right after I, I blinked out and they, they were still able to hit me um, so with the fix that they're doing with uh, with cloak you know heavy attacks charges and whatnot won't remove the invisibility um, that'll help you know because my night blading is all about getting in you know, picking on somebody real quick and then getting getting out of dodge. So I think it's going to be a, a great thing. And then, you know, also the Grim Focus change. Um, I might actually put it on my bar because it'll be easier to use now. So reducing, you know, down from the seven light attacks to four, I think that's a great change as well. Oh, yeah, that thing hits like a truck. I mean, when it originally launched, that's my feedback on the PTS. is like, guys, no one's going to do this eight times, like eight times. They nerfed it to seven, now four. Um, I think that's going to be a really cool burst ability, even in PvP and PvE. And that, that kind of leads us into the last a couple things here. Class Strength. Um, I think a couple things really benefited from this. I'm going to go first. I think Magic Builds are going to be tremendously more popular, uh, especially with the Nern Hone in PvP. Uh, I think PvE, it's kind of the same. Still, Magic Builds are great. Stamina Builds, you know, both kind of neck and neck. Uh, especially with the dodge roll change, I think stamina builds really took a hit. But this is all just speculation. Um, so Dragon Knights are going to have to learn to evolve. Sorks, the direct nerf to Bolt Escape, uh, costing so much more magic now that that's their, they're going to have to completely learn how to play it without streaking away and dictating when they want the fight. I like the change, but I don't know how harsh it is without playing it. Um, so every class is going to have something to, ch to change and do. The Templar seems like it benefited the most from this because um, now uh, you're going to get a faster animation for Breath of Life. Wow. Honor of the Dead has a great morph and Sunfire is getting fixed as well. Plus they didn't really nerf Radiant Destruction that much. They're going to make it actually work the way it's intended. So yeah. Templars I think are really good. But I'm telling you right now, from my initial gut impression, we don't have all the patch notes. It looks like Magical Nightblades are going to be fantastic. Um, Aloha, what do you think? Well, Nightblade is a class I have no clue about it, because I never managed to like it. Um, I'm so excited about the Dragon Knight being more a healer, officially, to have his own healing spell. Uh, I'm suddenly making a Dragon Knight healer. I always wanted to make one, and this time I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, I will be uh, max level next year, but still. <laughs> and Sig, what about you, class-wise? You know, again, I'm I'm right there. The uh, the Nightblade. Uh, you know, I've spent 250, 300,000 gold, something like that, respecking my my EP Nightblade back and forth between stamina and Magicka. And uh, really, I think Magicka is going to end up coming out on top. Yeah. But you know, just like you were saying, and and, and the big reason is is what I'm finding personally is the Magicka builds, uh, the Magicka morphs and whatnot with the Nightblade allow you to be a whole lot more survivable than the stamina morphs do. Especially yeah. without Vigor and the Lion Strength skills, and I think that's yeah. going to get tweaked as well. So there was so much to do, and they're on, they're coming back next week on Friday, and doing another iteration just as big. Um, so the bad things, you know, the VR16, the champion points, we're not going to touch on that. Um, the serial changes, I think, are interesting. So if you don't know, essentially, uh, in responses to everyone just dying so fast, they reduced damage and healing and shields and shields, which almost everyone uses, by 50%. Wow. So, until we get in there and test that, I mean, 
essentially an MMO should not be a first person shooter. You're, you're, if you get shot, you know, shot in one second and die, that's not a whole lot of fun. And there's builds that can do that, but they almost have no downsides. And I think this is a direct response to people just getting destroyed with snipe and ambushes and, and macros and stuff like that. But it's 50%? Is that a little too harsh? That's a, that's a crazy number, yeah. Uh, I, I hope that they put it on the PTS and really get people to look at it and see how it reacts because, I mean, You're I guess it's one of those anyone. things... Yeah, you, you start high, you start high, and then adjust your, uh, you know, your your nerf percentage lower as needed, I guess. But I hope they look at it very closely because that's, I mean, yeah, getting one shot it sucks, but at the same time, taking you know four minutes to do you know what used to take thirty seconds. Yeah, it's you know fun. I mean? You, it will be a real fight. You will have a real <laughs> duel between people. That can yeah. be interesting. I don't know. I, I like it the way it is now, just a little bit tuned up, because if, if you make a mistake, it's unforgiving now, which is kind of fun, but, I mean, when you have some sniper that ambushes and uses a snipe in a macro, it's, it's stupid, you know? Yeah. I, Aloha, have you been PvP anymore, or no? Uh, no, 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 not at all, but... <laughs> but, uh, when I was PvPing in other game, I prefer when you have longer fights than uh, fast fights, simply because you have the time to know what you're doing, and especially for someone who's a bit slow, uh, not saying I'm an idiot, but well, uh, I don't like things that go too fast because I don't have the time to understand what's going on. So when you have a long fight between two person, I think it's more interesting to learn exactly what you're doing when you need to block when you need to escape when you need to cast a defensive spell whatever uh, so i i think that is probably a good idea but now we need to see in practice because maybe it's too strong like you say but cannot you know numbers is numbers doesn't mean anything until you see the effect of it yeah definitely okay so i think that covers i mean there's just so much stuff we could talk for days but if we gotta end it at some point yeah maybe and, let's uh, just uh, speak about the racial very fast. Oh yeah, definitely. Loa, you want to talk about that? Go ahead. Yeah, because uh, it's a discussion we had before in some previous episode, and now they have announced that they will change uh, Argonian, Kashyyyk, Orcs, and Nord, which were the four races that were a bit sucky and they are not completely changing them they are just increasing the strong points of those uh, races so they become better at what they were supposed to do so uh, the Nord will have more health the Khajiit will have more weapon critical uh, the Argonian will have more uh, regeneration with potion both for uh, stamina health and magicka and the um, orc will have um, uh, they remove the charge bonus but they give a bonus at melee attack um, which make orcs very good for melee DPS character now so I think it's it's a really really great change because it doesn't change drastically. So your character that you you have chosen an Argonian because you wanted the Argonian to do that, well, it still do that but better. So. Yeah, me personally, I think the the Nord was okay change. Just still the Khajiit with extra crit. I mean, I don't know, crit's not that important in this type of game. This meta where uh, weapon mm -hmm. power and spell power are fantastic. So I wish I would have seen a stamina or some type of regeneration on the Khajiit. Mm -hmm. um, Orc got a really strong buff. I think that's going to be a really strong, strong class, especially for melee damage. So good for Orcs. Argonians, still a little bit lackluster. I mean, the potion thing is great, but if it's at 15% or something, then that would be a significant bonus. So we just don't know. So Sig, what about your Nords? Well, okay, so before I get started here, the, the, the first thing that I kind of want to mention, and this is because of discussions that, you know, we've had, discussions that I've had with other people regarding this, is one thing that everybody needs to understand is that this is just a small group of changes to passives. You know, they didn't say this was it. Uh, they, If you kind of read between the lines of what they've said this last show and the show before is that there's not going to be anything drastic happening with racial passives until they introduce racial respects. Yeah. Um, it's been mentioned a couple times. So, you know, as we go through this one thing, uh, I, I think it would just benefit everybody to understand is that while these changes are all that is mentioned, it's not necessarily all that is happening. 
Yeah. Um, you know, now regarding what they've announced so far, um, it's kind of underwhelming uh, to me anyway. It, you know, it's looking at these passives, and if you look at it, you know what takes these four races and makes them less desirable compared to the others, it has nothing to do with the passives that they have. It has to do with the lack of resource pool uh, mm. and, and mm. regeneration. And and I'm I'm going to steal this from uh, from Beer Bong Jin. You know, he he mentioned this, and and what it is is that what they're doing is they're taking the most terrible passives and making them slightly less terrible. It doesn't help <laughs> anybody. It doesn't help anybody. Um, you know, my, my health regen on my Nord is fine where it's at. You know, <laughs> it's not going to do anything more for me. Um, you know, by bumping it up a little bit more. Or yeah. you know the max health or whatever they're doing. I, you know it's it, I'm so under underwhelmed with it that you know I'm just going to keep doing my thing because I've pretty much written off the passives at this point and, and I'm compensating it the best I can in other ways. So you know hopefully down the road um, we actually see you know if 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 two races have regeneration abilities to one of the resources resource pools I think everybody should have that and health. It does nothing, you know. The, every, it's got to be stamina or magicka. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, that's a yeah, good point. Same, same boat. It's like, I mean, but at least they didn't overdo it. I could have swore they would just make Argonian some walking goblins. <laughs> I was gonna have to yeah. re-roll, but well, they they may still. I mean, again, these are just some uh, short-term changes until they have, you know, race, race, racial respects in the works. So. You know, yep. we're just going to have to kind of wait and see when that happens. Either way, definitely interesting. So, um, topics for next week. Do we have anything else to say? What's our overall feeling? Is this good for the game, bad for the game? Not including VR16 or champion point stuff. Well, we do have to see. I think that's the best I can say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, on paper, overall, I think for me, it's, you know, it's, it's leading towards a better game in Cyrodiil. Um, you know, because right now, for a lot of people, the the Cyrodiil game is spend three minutes running on your horse, get in the fight, die instantly. Spend three minutes riding on your horse, get in the fight, die instantly. Yeah. Um, and this is going to force people to, you know, who who spam dodge roll and and you know, are are block knights like me. Block knights, and you know, it's going to force you guys into doing something different. The damage reductions, uh, the healing reduction stuff like that. It's going to draw out combat a little bit. And give uh, you know give people time to to kind of figure out what what they need to do to to improve themselves. I think. Well, uh, because you know that like that's the whole thing. The whole reason I created this Nightblade and, and planted him in Blackwater was so that I could learn. Yep. And you know now you don't I, die a whole lot faster in Blackwater. It's a great place to learn, isn't it? Yeah. But at the same time, there's still points where it's you know I come in, I get stunned, I get one shotted, and what could I have possibly learned from that other than uh, you know, don't don't go where somebody can stun and one shot me. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, yeah. So. Well, I we'll think see. they're I think they're doing a good job with the the balance of the game. But please, us, let's test this and let's really test this. I mean, I'm yeah. excited as anyone to do Imperial City. I mean, I I, I just that's what I a small group PvP. I mean, that, that's my dream in this game, but I'd rather have something that works and works for a very, very long time than something that completely, you know, doesn't, it's completely crap because we didn't test it long enough. It takes 50 minutes to kill one person in a duel, or there's an exploit in a dungeon with 200% more. Um, so we got to test it. And especially us as a community, I know we're unpaid testers and stuff like that, but at some point, you know, it's our community. It's our thing. We got to step up together and kind of figure it out together. Yep. So, all right, enough rambling, next topics. Um, okay, so we're gonna do progression, progression. So like what myself, Aloha, and Sigtrix do to progress our characters, our accounts, champion points, PVE, PVP, how we go about it. That's topic number one. Topic number two is consoles. We wanna give another chance. This is our last time we're gonna give it a chance to talk about console impression. Sig yep. has now as a console, we all do PS4, North American server. Um, I know a lot of you, you want us to talk about this. And if something groundbreaking, earth-shattering happens in the next ESO Live, we will probably do an episode, maybe even two. I don't know. Um, so yeah, those are your topics. I really, we really appreciate all you guys' feedback and comments. It's really, 
this thing has turned into something you know really cool and uh yep. time out from tamriel i i really enjoy doing this every sunday yeah yeah amazing. indeed i like it goodbye right, thank everyone you so much for watching bye